tutorial we are going to go over how to add a bird flying in across and into our tree in our frame by frame animation of this tree growing up and so uh, what we will do is we should already have a layer created if we're picking up where we left off for our bird we'll go to the 50th frame uh, about where our tree ends growing and we'll press F6 to create a new keyframe um, so what we're going to need is an image of a bird to use as reference I have already started looking up uh, images to use and it's really important that we look at a side view um, and also the flying uh, of the bird that you choose the wing needs to be extended and preferably if you can find a picture like this one that has just one wing visible if it has two that's okay you still really just need to animate one um, and that will be um, just as easy to do as if you have two visible. So we'll take that, we copied it. I'm gonna go over to animate again. I'm actually going to create a second layer, okay, here. Um, one layer is going to have my picture reference of the bird, and then the other is gonna have my drawing. So I will call this, um, this one will actually be my, uh, I'll call this graphic layer. And, uh, and so I'll paste, I'll switch so the graphic is on underneath and then bird will be where I draw my image. And so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and paste in center just by right clicking on there in the stage and now my image is here. So I'm going to take my free transform tool and select this image of the falcon. Oh, it seems like... Do have it. Not seeing the boxes to transform right now, so there we go. They weren't popping up. So I'm just shrinking this smaller uh, so that it is about the right size for the tree that he is going to be flying into. So this looks about right. I think that's okay. So uh, that being done, we'll lock that graphic layer, and now we're going to draw right on top of this uh, bird, just as we had done um, with our Space Cat sketch. So, uh, tools we can either use are our pen tool or our brush tool. I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. Um, it's just a personal preference of mine. So I'm going around and just going to make a couple zigzags back and forth. following the edge of the wing and going all the way around the tail of the bird. Get this long piece here a little bit. All right, going up. I think this is something in his hands or his talon there, so I'm not going to actually go all the way around that. And then all the way to the beak. And then hovering over that first dot again, I should get that bubble, and that means that I've completed my line. So uh, I'll go back in and maybe add a few details with my brush. Um, I could go ahead and just adjust the curves of my line, I suppose, first, and then I can go back in with the brush as well. So just kind of uh, bending some of these lines to make the curves a little more natural, uh, some of the spots we're really too rigid for the subject we're looking at here so uh, again just going through and pulling pushing on a few different areas the beak is probably an important one here there we go maybe I can curve the angle of the head alright so that probably looks pretty good if I want to check I can turn off the visibility on my graphic layer so you can see you got a pretty good outline going there. I uh, probably need to just mark a couple interior details like where the eye is. So I'll zoom in a bit. I'm going to use my oval tool to just make an oval about the size of the eye. A little hard to see because it is overlapping right there. Um, okay, so uh, a couple other lines I might add in. Um, with the brush tool is kind of how I like to add uh, details and so I might take a brush maybe like this angled brush 
and make a few marks here for things like the uh, the talons and maybe just a few lines in here for kind of the edge of the feathers okay maybe one extra one there kind of going along the edge of his body maybe one there is where his leg would be a couple in the tail alright so that's uh, good enough for now probably uh, again I'll turn off the visibility to see what I have I think I need one last line for his beak and then I can move on to actually animating so now that I have him outlined I think that'll do for now. Um, I may want to take another look at this one particular spot right in the neck here where I think I want to move this. Oops. Um, positioning a little bit. I kind of want to bend this out more. There we go. I think that curve is much better. Great. So, uh, I'll go ahead and actually now I can just delete this Falcon uh, image, this graphic layer. I think that I'm pretty much done with it. Um, but I will wait uh, for now. I'll go ahead and fill this in uh, with some color. So, choosing the color picker on the side. I'm going to choose some maybe tan shades. Uh, that's pretty good. I'm going to tannish brown. Fill in these areas. The other uh, option is uh, I need to close gaps because I do know I have a couple uh, little gaps in here and so um, I will need to have closed gaps option turned on here. Just going around filling in for the most part. Um, I might go ahead and take my color picker and just kind of lighten this color a tad use that and maybe go into a couple other areas and maybe even use an even lighter color Get this kind of whitish yellow color for a couple parts yeah hitting some of these highlights too that was maybe a few too many But there we go. So that, that looks pretty good for now. Uh, maybe add a couple, bit of color to where the talons are. Again, not uh, trying to spend too, too much time on this part of it. Actually, I think that works uh, as I want to get to the animating. So uh, what we are going to do is actually just animate the wing flapping. Uh, and then we're going to make this uh, bird move across with a tween. So this bird now that we've got him uh, all set and colored uh, we want to convert this to a graphic so I just press the F8 key on my keyboard and make sure it's converted to a graphic and I will name him Falcon and so now what we have is our Falcon graphic all set we'll go inside of there and uh, we're going to edit the wing on this new timeline so actually inside of the Falcon or your bird image, we're going to create a new layer. One layer, the top one will be the wing, the bottom layer will be uh, the bird or the body, either way. Um, and what we're going to need is about 10 frames in this animation, so clicking on the 10th frame and then holding shift and clicking on the 10th in the other layer, and then hitting the F5 key will open up those frames um, all to the way to 10. So um, what we're going to need to do is take this arm off the wing will actually um, come off the bird and then go on to its own layer so I'm going to use my lasso tool okay something we have not quite used yet I don't think in our animation class but this lasso tool is one that should be familiar if you've uh, worked with Photoshop at all um, and we are just going to select around that so we just get the wing I'm going to then uh, cut that out click on this first keyframe here of the wing layer and then I'm going to go to edit and paste in place so it's going to paste it directly where it was before um, so now I have the wing separated from the bird and I'm going to press F8 again um, and convert this also into a graphic is what I could do and 
I think is the uh, best option. So we will we'll call this wing. So, oh right, I already have one named wing. So I'm going to name this wing uh, one. Okay. So um, now what we'll do is we are just going to go frame by frame and just shrink down the size of this wing. So um, second frame, we'll do it F6. We're going to shrink the size of this wing and then just move it back so it's connected to the arm. We'll press F6 again and now maybe we will uh, take this wing and rotate it a little bit and then shrink it down a little bit more and kind of move it into the right place so that it is still attached to the body. And we were going to get out to five frames, so let's go F6 again on this fourth frame. We'll squish it down a good amount, significantly more, um, because on the next one we want this to be almost flush to the body, as if the wings are down. All right, so one more time, F6, um, and I'm going to squish this pretty low now and really have it be like the wing is pretty much up against the body of the bird. Um, I was going to try and rotate that just a little bit more and see what that looks like. Uh, now it seems like it's in front of his foot too much. So uh, we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, they may need some playing with. Uh, later on. Um, always a good idea to save every once in a while. So now what you can see is if we scroll through this, you can see the wing um, closing. Okay, so the wing is closing down, but we also need it to open back up. Um, and so what we are actually going to do is we, we actually want our bird to start with a wing um, in the down position and end in the down position. So we're going to do a little tricky thing here. We're going to do uh, something that's nice that Flash allows us to do is to copy and reverse our frames. So we're going to take this frame, these frames that we just drew, select them all by holding shift and clicking on the first and last, and we're going to go down to reverse frames. Okay. Um, now I didn't, I'm going to undo, I'm going to try this one more time because um, I don't like how it moved the frames there. I'm going to try to reverse frames. Okay, so it still is putting them down at the end here. I can't explain that, but I'm just going to click and drag them here. So um, now we've got the wing kind of closing and opening, and now I want to take those frames again, copy them, and paste them. And then I'm going to need to reverse those one more time. Okay, so I'm not sure why those keep adding that to the end there. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to also clear out these last few frames because I don't want any extra frames on the end there. Okay, so great. Now you can see the bird's wing is opening and then closing. Awesome. So now, uh, only another step or two left, really, as we kind of come back out to our scene. Um, we can definitely get rid of this graphic layer now. So we just have the three layers, the one with the bird, the tree, and the ground. Um, I'm going to take the bird and now make a tween of it from here, off the side of the stage, onto the tree. So what I'll need to do is go ahead, um, some frames in the timeline here, hit F6 on your keyboard, and then move the bird onto the tree. And we may want to just change the tilt, the angle that the, the bird is at, whatever you may have for your chosen bird. Um, you know, an angle that looks like he may be actually standing more than flying. Um, I know the wing looked like it was open at that point, but it should probably be closed. Well, we'll see where it ends up when I add the tween in. So I'm going to click on this first frame and then add a classic tween. So let's see the wing opens, closes, and opens, and closes. Okay, so what I actually notice is that, let's test this animation. The wing is going to keep opening and flapping and opening and flapping. 
even after the bird lands. And that's because what's set right now is that that animation is set to loop. Um, and so what we're going to do is, uh, is click on your graphic here and look in your properties bar where it says uh, looping on the side. And what we're going to do is change that loop option to just play once. Um, there will be instances where we definitely want our animations to loop. This would be one where we just want it to play once. So let's preview that again. And we'll see the tree grow and the bird flies in. And there you have it. So we've added a bird flying in with a wing, um, wing flapping. And I hope you have lots of luck with this lesson. And uh, 